Hi, I'm Harald Sack. And I'm Tabea Tietz. And this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number one, Knowledge Representation with Graphs. In this section of the lecture, we are talking about the art of understanding. Okay, for that we first have to deal with meaning. So we look at meaning from the viewpoint of philosophy of language, metaphysics and metasemantics. There, meaning is a relationship between two sorts of things. On the first side we have signs and of course the kind of things these signs intend, express or signify. And usually we are dealing with words, another kind of nonverbal symbols, and words that we form and that we are using, they are necessarily meaningful, which means they have to carry meaning. Otherwise, if a word would carry no meaning, it would be useless in our process of communication. Okay, but what now does it mean to understand? Understanding, in general, is the ability to grasp the meaning of information. Information is thereby conveyed in a message using a specific language from sender to a receiver. And information is understood by the receiver of a message only if the receiver interprets the information correctly. But now what does the interpretation depend on? Correct interpretation depends on several factors. Once and for all, the most important thing is syntax. But besides syntax, there is also semantics and context. So these three things we have already heard of, syntax, semantics and context. But there are then also pragmatics and experience. So let's start with the first one, with syntax. Syntax comes from the Greek and means arrangement or ordering. In grammatics, syntax simply denotes the study of the principles and processes by which sentences are constructed in particular languages. And in formal languages, syntax is just a set of rules by which uh, well-formed expressions can be created from fundamental sets of symbols like the alphabet. In computer science, on the other hand, syntax defines the normative structure of data. Okay, but can you give me an example? Yes, yeah, sure. So if you look, take a look at the first sentence here, this sentence, no verb, then it's very hard to understand the sentence really because the syntax is simply incorrect. And when we take a look at the second sentence, this sentence has no verb, the syntax is correct and we can almost understand it, but it is quite clear that syntax is not enough. We also need semantics. Right. So semantics, next step, also comes from Greek pertains to the character, the study of meaning. Semantics is part of linguistics, which focuses on the sense and meaning of language or symbols of language. It's the study of interpretation of signs or symbols, as used by agents or communities, within particular circumstances or contexts. And semantics, as itself, asks how sense and meaning of complex concepts can be derived from simple concepts. And there is a set of rules that are applied there and these rules are simply syntactic rules. So derived from simple concepts based on the rules of syntax. So that's the semantics. The semantics of a message of course also depends on something so it does not stand of itself. We have already seen that of course there can be different contexts and there is another thing we will also learn about, it's called the pragmatics. But first, let's have a look at an example. If I say, this sentence has no verb, it's syntactically correct. But of course, the sentence that we see here has a verb, so therefore it's semantically wrong. The second sentence, this sentence has a verb, is syntactically and semantically correct. Okay, so then let's go on with context. Context comes from the Latin word contextus and means interweaved. It denotes the surrounding of a symbol in an expression with respect to its relationship with surrounding expressions and further related elements. Context denotes all elements of any sort of communications that define the interpretation of the communicated content. And um, so it always also depends on where we um, are 
um, and if you understand a sentence correctly. If Harald and I are in the jungle and suddenly Harald says, Tabea, this jaguar looks rather elegant, I already know that I can be scared because he's probably talking about the animal and not the car. In addition, we have pragmatics. Pragmatics also comes from Greek and it means action. It reflects the intention by which language is used to communicate a message. So if I say something, of course, I can be in full earnest. So that can be really true what I'm saying. On the other hand, of course, I might have the intention to make fun of somebody or to be sarcastic. Then, of course, the intention is changed and also the meaning of what I'm originally want to convey is changed. You see, this is another layer which introduces further ambiguity into language. In linguistics, pragmatics denotes the study of applying language, therefore in different situations. And it denotes the intended purpose of the speaker and it studies the ways in which context contributes to meaning. Okay, following example. Tabea, is there any beer left in the fridge? What would you do? So I would think that you would want me to go to the fridge and get you a beer. Of course, you might now ask yourself, so why didn't I say exactly like that? But of course, you probably have seen this situation before. Okay, and then there is a next thing which is called experience. Yes, experience considers all knowledge that you have learned throughout your life and is put into context with the world you are living in. Experience in the sense is often referred to as common sense knowledge or world knowledge. And also here we have a nice example probably, but Harald, unfortunately, I don't understand it. Yeah, this is a perfect example for experience because probably all of you or most of you who are younger than I am, I have the advantage of being of old age and I might understand what is conveyed here. So this comes from a time when uh, the, the Volkswagen Beetle was introduced in the United States. And usually, of course, you had by that time in the 1950s, 1960s, you had huge cars and everybody was think big was an issue there. And therefore, Volkswagen introduced that small car with a slogan was which, which was called Think Small! Exclamation mark, and had a huge success. And you are only able to understand that, of course, if you're old enough to have seen these kind of advertisements. So this is kind of experience which also contributes to the understanding of linguistic expressions of language. Okay, now, what does it take to make communication successful? For successful communication, information, of course, first of all, has to be transmitted correctly. So the syntax has to be okay. Next thing, the meaning, the semantics of the transmitted information must be interpreted correctly. You see, this is again written in red, so this is a very important thing. You have to understand what I'm saying, which means you have to interpret the meaning correctly. And then, of course, understanding depends on the context of both of sender and receiver, and of course on the pragmatics of the sender. So it means the intention of the sender. So is it meant in earnest or is it meant sarcastically, ironically? And of course then personal experience that you have determines on how sender and receiver interpret the semantics, the context and the pragmatics of a message and thus its intended meaning. So these are the main uh, important components of successful communication that we have to keep in mind. And now that we have clarified how communication really works and what understanding in the end means, we are now going to a more formal chapter and will continue in the next section of the lecture with graphs and triples as a first form of knowledge representation.